In the late 1970s, the parishioners of the suburbs of Texas were living an amicable life. The regular churchgoers were also years-long friends. Everything was thriving until one day, Candy Montgomery and Alan Gore came in contact with each other. Love and Death is a crime series based on the true story of Candy Montgomery. The work is created and written by David E. Kelly. It is an ongoing show and three out of seven episodes have been aired. The episodes are released every Thursday on HBO Max. Love and Death is now the third adaptation of Candy Montgomery's horrendous crimes committed against her old friend, Betty Gore. This one, though, is said to be the first dramatization of the story that is so accurate. It is shocking. So let's dig in and find out why Candy Montgomery decided an extramarital affair was the way to her freedom. The first episode, titled The Huntress Depicts How Candy Montgomery Convinces Alan Gore into Having an Affair with Her. It is also a sneak peek into Candy's life as a person. She appears to be an extroverted woman who cares for everyone around her. Her life is comparable to the other housewives in the area. She loves to read and write and also attends a writing workshop. She wants to rebel when Alan Gore offers her his hand to pick her up from the ground during volleyball. This brief interaction sparks something in her. Candy has a talk about it with her best friend, Sherry. It seems as if she really wants to fuel the sparks and create a fire. And she does, despite all the warnings from her friend Jackie. After Alan finally gives in to Candy and his desires, a sneaky affair between the two begins. They question their actions at many points but never stop. Candy and Alan have lunch together, make love in the bed, and shower at the motel. This episode also portrays the underlying causes of extramarital affairs. A lot of it has to do with the emotional distance between the spouses. Well, you would be a fool to do something as terrible and unfair as cheating to fill that void. There is still an option of being communicative and saving the relationship. Since this story is not fictional, it depicts how humans tend to overlook the solutions and create even bigger problems. It is also a message for people like Candy Montgomery to not wither the flowers of someone else's garden when your own is not blooming. Elizabeth Olsen did a great job in characterizing Candy Montgomery. It is not easy to be so calmly annoying and odd in that sense. Jesse Plemons did justice to Alan Gore's character in the story as well. He is pictured to be a doltish character who is impressionable. At the end of the episode, Blood is streaming down the bathtub. This is a brilliant cliffhanger to end the episode and shows the thought that went into creating this show. The second episode focuses more on Betty Gore, Alan Gore's wife. It is evident that Betty is battling depression and anxiety disorders. She has a hard time dealing with her husband's absence. She even cheated on him in the past to punish him for being away from her. Her superstitious nature represents her illiberality. It is apparent that Betty's mental state is playing a part in creating a gap between her and Alan. Alan mentions his culpability to Candy. She, in response, tells him that they will keep the affair so hidden, no one would get hurt. The irony. This repulsive relationship was built on the rule that none of them would get too invested in it. But for Candy, it becomes more than a dalliance. I was rolling my eyes there. They should have stuck to their plan and ended this whole thing right then. But the doom was faded. It was so exasperating to watch Alan meeting Candy after Betty gave birth. Alan and Betty fall further apart after he refuses to be intimate with her. He is scared of falling out of love with his wife. But Candy has reached that point where she can't bear to be away from Alan. Betty convinces Alan for something called marriage encounter. Alan talks about it to Candy at lunch one day. It upsets Candy, and they both put a stop to their affair that day. He also requests her to babysit his kids while he and Betty are at Dallas Coaching Inn. When the couple returns, all happy to pick up the kids, Candy seems to hate the sight. She is covetous of Betty and Alan's now blooming relationship. The whole thing between them was such a nuisance. The message this episode conveys is the importance of communication. Betty and Alan's reconciliation was not marriage encounters work. It happened because they were unflinchingly honest with each other for the first time in many years. The show conveys that we shouldn't run away from our problems, but face them with dignity, which Candy and Alan lacked, sadly. Lily Rabe characterized Betty Gore really well. I can't see any other actress portraying Betty's state as well as she did. 
Jesse Plemons and Elizabeth Olsen's performance was again applause-worthy. The episode ends with Candy Montgomery grinding meat in her kitchen aggressively. This is most likely a hint at something really tragic that would occur at the hands of Candy. Episode 3 of Love and Death is about the revelation of Candy and Alan's affair. In October 1979, Alan and Candy completely abandoned their relationship. Both try to make their own marriages work, but it would be too late. After observing a change in Betty, Candy talks Pat into going for a marriage encounter. After some dithering, he agrees. Marriage encounter does work for Pat and Candy, too. Their marriage seems to improve, and Candy is relieved to spot no feelings for Alan anymore. All was going great until Pat finds Alan's love letters to Candy one night when she isn't home. How I wished he found that out earlier. It seemed to me as if Pat was blaming himself for the liaison between the two. He partly was to be blamed. He was distant and was shown to be watching TV in the past two episodes. In all honesty, Pat was a better person than Candy. Her character throughout this episode is obscure. She appears puffed up with conceit when she mentions her dislike for rejection. When she started to reflect on her actions, it confused me even more. What kind of a person Candy really is? Candy drops by Betty Gore's at the end of the episode to pick up Elisa's swimsuit. Bad timing. It is by the time Betty has found out about her past affair with her husband. Betty was already dealing with mental ailments and this betrayal was too much to take. She takes out an ax to avenge herself. This would take a bad turn, though. This episode is by far my favorite. It raises many questions not only about the characters, but our lives as humans in general, too. Looking forward to what more evil Candy has to commit in the next episode. I would love to know what you all think about this show so far. Please leave me a comment down below. If you liked this video, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Turn on the notifications to stay updated on interesting movies and series. Until next time.